ganz herzlich. I welcome you to this uh, lecture from our new um, guest, um, Vladimir uh, Gelman. Um, he is presenting um, <coughs> to us a talk about temptation and constraints of authoritarian modernization in Russia. Um, um, Professor Gelman is at the, works at the St. Petersburg Lutheran University in St. Petersburg, one of the two new founded universities after 1990, and uh, since a while also at the um, well known um, Alexander Institute of the University in Finland. Um, again, Mr. Gelman is, I think, one of the most well known. Political scientists, I, I would say, in, in, uh, in Western, Western context. So he has published a lot, plenty of, of articles, papers on modernization of authoritarianism, regime change, um, neo Putin patrimonialism, uh, crony capitalism, the role of informal institutions, informality, informal institutions, and often quoted. Uh, paper of you, and uh, recently he published a book which we have already in our library um, on uh, Russian authoritarian modernization. So I think we we'll have uh, we get a lecture close to this book. Um, actually, I've, I've read that you uh, wrote and uh, have written 17 books. I'm not so sure of the two, but uh, that's quite impressive. Um, and you um, earned the Russian Political Science Association Award. Um, and so I think um, we are very happy to have you here, that you present one of your most recent research to us. And, uh, yeah, we welcome you once again, and the floor is yours. Uh, first and foremost, let me uh, thank uh, uh, Professor Bloom uh, for the invitation, and uh, thank you for uh, coming to this uh, lecture. Uh, I just uh, uh, need uh, uh, to, uh, to be correct, uh, uh, 17 books uh, is not uh, the list of books uh, written uh, uh, by myself. Uh, many of these books are uh, multi-authored volumes or edited volumes, uh, so it's uh, not uh, what, uh, what i done alone. And actually, uh, the book uh, I uh, will be talking about uh, is uh, not uh, uh, my uh, uh, own uh, product, but product of uh, 11 uh, scholars uh, from Russia and from uh, Finland, and uh, it is resulted from a uh, large uh, project uh, uh, called Choices of Russian Modernization, uh, funded by uh, the uh, Academy of Finland, uh, and uh, what uh, I will be talking is based not uh, only on uh, my own research, but on uh, research of uh, my uh, uh, co-authors and uh, collaborators. So, um, the uh, basic uh, uh, concept uh, of uh, uh, this uh, uh, book is uh, authoritarian modernization. Uh, it became a sort of cliché, uh, but uh, what it means with regard uh, to uh, the subject of uh, our uh, discussion today. Authoritarian modernization is a sort of uh, uh, project. This is how I uh, understand uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, 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 mode of uh, achieving of socio-economic development, uh, progress uh, through economic growth, uh, through uh, economic development, under uh, an authoritarian regime. Of course, if we uh, will go to the distant past, uh, we will figure out that uh, many uh, modernizations uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, the uh, modern world uh, were done uh, in uh, authoritarian settings. Many European modernization of, uh, modernizations of uh, 
18th and 19th century uh, were uh, conducted uh, under uh, authoritarian regimes. Uh, and uh, 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 if we will go beyond Europe, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, there is plenty of examples uh, from uh, uh, made there in Japan to uh, uh, Turkey and other Turk. But if we will uh, not uh, go so deeply into the past and uh, we'll deal uh, with a more recent history, we'll realize that uh, this uh, project was uh, so much attractive uh, in uh, various uh, corners uh, uh, of the, the globe. Uh, in Latin America, in Asia, in Africa, and yet in the post-Soviet world. There are several uh, success stories which uh, are perceived as uh, sort of uh, role models uh, when uh, certain authoritarian regimes uh, achieved uh, developmental progress uh, through uh, rapid economic growth. And of course, uh, examples uh, of uh, East Asia, most uh, notably uh, uh, China over the last uh, uh, four decades, uh, South Korea under Pan, uh, Park Chun-hee and uh, uh, Rode Wu and uh, others uh, are quite uh, telling stories. But to what extent uh, this uh, authoritarian modernization project uh, is uh, relevant for present-day Russia? Some years ago, two Russian uh, economists, uh, well, they are no longer Russian economists, but economists of Russian origins, uh, Ekaterina Zhuravska and Sergei Guriev, published uh, an article uh, called uh, Why Russia is not South Korea. And they argued that uh, uh, Russia cannot repeat the uh, uh, success story of uh, South Korea of uh, 1970s and 1980s, uh, basically because the quality of institutions uh, in uh, Russia uh, is uh, much more poorer than those uh, in uh, South Korea. That is true, uh, but uh, uh, it's only part of the uh, answer because institutions are not, uh, well, fallen from heaven, uh, institutions uh, is uh, uh, a product uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, efforts of uh, certain uh, actors and uh, we should not uh, uh, well, uh, pick institutions uh, alone as uh, the only, uh, only uh, uh, element of uh, success or favor of uh, modernization as many institutionalist economists uh, like Ashimov and Robinson do. Uh, we have to have a broader look on uh, this picture. And I would say that uh, Russia is an interesting example of uh, attempts of uh, authoritarian modernization made uh, since the very time of collapse of the Soviet Union. To put it bluntly, every time uh, when uh, Russia's rulers uh, faced with a uh, uh, listing of priorities, uh, items on uh, their agenda, to reach uh, some sort of uh, economic development or uh, rather to uh, increase political freedoms. Every time choices were made uh, in uh, favor of uh, economic development at the expense of uh, uh, political freedoms. It was in 1991 uh, when uh, uh, Russia's rulers uh, uh, froze uh, existing political institutions and pursued uh, the way to uh, uh, radical economic reforms. It was in the 2000 uh, when uh, Vladimir Putin came to power and set up uh, his uh, uh, priorities. It was uh, under presidency of Dmitry Medvedev who uh, openly claimed modernization as a centerpiece of his uh, uh, policy program. And to a certain extent, uh, we can talk about most recent uh, development, although uh, uh, it hardly uh, be uh, uh, presented uh, in terms of uh, uh, modernization. And I would say that the idea of authoritarian modernization uh, has uh, many uh, very influential uh, supporters. Probably the most uh, well-known uh, proponent of this uh, Authoritarian modernization project is uh, Samuel Huntington, who almost half a century ago wrote a very powerful book uh, 
called political order in changing societies. This was uh, a sort of Bible of authoritarian modernization because uh, Huntington argued that uh, if uh, <coughs> we um, will pursue uh, both economic and political development uh, simultaneously in modernizing country, it will uh, lead uh, to uh, political disorder, instability and major turmoil, and therefore uh, the best solution is uh, to reach a certain uh, degree of socio-economic development and postpone, uh, economic, uh, 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 postpone political freedoms uh, for a while. There are many uh, present-day proponents uh, like uh, Vladimir Popov, a, a Russian economist who uh, published <coughs> a recent book where he praised Chinese way of economic development uh, because it's conducted for the rule of law <coughs> and only uh, uh, after building a strong rule of law uh, there is a, a possibility for uh, expansion of political freedoms. Otherwise, uh, economy will be unsustainable and economic growth will be uh, rather slow uh, according to Popov. Certainly, uh, these arguments are uh, worth uh, further discussion. To what extent uh, the sequencing uh, approach uh, is uh, relevant uh, in various uh, 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 countries uh, and various uh, regions. But what about empirical evidence? Why authoritarian modernization uh, is uh, uh, so popular and why it uh, brought uh, so few proofs? Or like uh, an American economist, uh, Danny Roderick, uh, stated uh, that uh, for every uh, uh, successful reformer like uh, Lee Kuan Yew in Singapore, uh, there are many uh, dictators like uh, Mobutu in Congo who uh, brought uh, their uh, uh, respective countries to uh, decay and uh, deterioration. And uh, uh, if we have a look on uh, numbers, uh, we will figure out that average economic growth uh, in democracies and non-democracies is uh, nearly the same. But the diversity among non-democracies uh, is uh, 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 great, and uh, it's an empirical proof of uh, argument of Rodin. So what about Russia? On this landscape, Russia is neither Singapore nor Congo. We see some ups and downs in uh, the period from 1999 till 2008, uh, there was uh, average economic growth uh, 7 to 8 uh, percent per annum, quite impressive by any international standards. But uh, there were also uh, many uh, shortcomings, flaws, and finally after 2014, uh, the goals of modernization were substituted by uh, geopolitical goals, uh, 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 aspiring uh, international greatness and uh, the very word modernization nearly disappeared uh, from uh, the lexicon of uh, Russian media and uh, Russian rulers. So how we can explain uh, why uh, the evidence for authoritarian modernization both uh, in Russia and comparatively is quite mixed? Let's uh, use to mixed, uh, very, very mild, I would say. There are several uh, explanations uh, which are not uh, country specific. There are broader comparative uh, explanations. One is uh, uh, related uh, to the structure, to the legacy of the past. Because uh, you can't uh, make modernization by design. Certainly, uh, every, uh, every ruler, every policy reformer uh, has to build uh, uh, a strategy based uh, upon um, previous development, previous trajectory of socio-economic development. Uh, and certainly, uh, Soviet uh, modernization uh, project was uh, well, not always conductive uh, for uh, rapid growth, uh, given uh, very uh, distorted uh, uh, structure of economy, a uh, huge legacy of uh, military industrial production, huge, uh, huge uh, social uh, and spatial dis displacement uh, of uh, uh, major resources uh, and, the, and the like. There are plenty of uh, uh, works uh, on this subject. Also, the quality of the state uh, is a, cr a crucial variable because uh, certainly uh, this was uh, one of the key uh, 
elements of success stories of uh, East Asia is a uh, uh, good uh, quality of uh, East Asian bureaucracy. Again, uh, for uh, Russia as well as for other post-Soviet countries, we observe uh, quite the opposite tendency. To some extent, the decline of quality of the state uh, was a result of decay of the Soviet state and uh, its uh, further collapse and also troubles of uh, post-communist transformation. But uh, certainly uh, quality of uh, post-Soviet states uh, is uh, rather, uh, rather poor. But apart from structure, uh, there are some uh, choices made by uh, major agents, by political actors, and we see that uh, not all authoritarian regimes are conductive uh, for authoritarian modernization. Again, there are several studies which demonstrated that uh, party-based uh, uh, regimes uh, like in China or in Mexico under PRI uh, rule are better suited for uh, uh, developmental goals than uh, personalist regimes and particularly uh, electoral authoritarian regimes uh, which emerged uh, in the post-Soviet area. Electoral authoritarian regimes actually <coughs> combined uh, worst features of both democracy and authoritarianism because they conduct uh, meaningful elections, these elections are unfair, uh, need of uh, buying loyalty of uh, voters uh, greatly contributed to politicization of uh, economy and uh, of economic policy making and at the same time regimes faced with the threats of, uh, the, to their survival in case of Russia, the uh, experience of 2011-2012 mass protests is just an illustration for that. And more specifically with regard uh, to authoritarian modernization project, of course, ideas and perceptions of political leaders and policy makers uh, play decisive role uh, in uh, their policy choices. Uh, because uh, certainly uh, uh, many uh, uh, efforts uh, put by uh, policymakers uh, are uh, driven by uh, uh, priorities of uh, political leaders and these priorities may change over time to more conductive or less conductive uh, direction for, uh, uh, for uh, modernization. So let's uh, 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 have a look on Russia through the prism of all these uh, theoretical considerations which are not much uh, country specific. Uh, it's a, <coughs> uh, a, a problem for many countries uh, at the globe, uh, basically at the uh, uh, mid, uh, uh, middle of the uh, uh, world uh, table of uh, social economic development. And, uh, Russia is certainly not alone. So what about a uh, uh, basic uh, 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 list of uh, structural factors of modernization? One should uh, say that uh, Russia is a relatively developed country. And uh, in most of uh, uh, standard socioeconomic indicators, it's well above the global median. GDP per capita, human development index, all of that well, Russia is not so bad, uh, and uh, even uh, those who are uh, critical toward, uh, toward uh, Russia's uh, uh, socio-economic trajectory uh, should take into account that many standards uh, indicators uh, such as well, uh, 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 the share of uh, 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 bearers of uh, high education, the uh, share of urban population and the like is well above uh, global median and Russia is uh, much better than uh, some, uh, uh, some countries of uh, Eastern Europe, uh, let alone uh, uh, regions like uh, uh, Asia or Latin America. And uh, in many ways Russia was already modernized uh, well before post-Soviet period. Uh, uh, it was uh, 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 very, I would say, uh, uh, very um, uh, widening uh, part of Soviet modernization, which is not a subject matter of today's uh, uh, discussion. In this uh, series of uh, lectures, uh, there is a number of uh, discussions uh, about uh, Soviet models, so I will leave 
uh, these uh, debates to, uh, to uh, other lecturers. But I would say that uh, starting conditions uh, for, uh, uh, for Russia were not so bad in uh, terms of uh, so-called objective indicators. But we see uh, that uh, uh, there is a, a, a poor quality of, uh, of bureaucracy and uh, it is confirmed uh, by uh, many international comparisons uh, using uh, <coughs> rankings from, uh, from the World Bank, from Transparency International, from other agencies. Again, these uh, indicators are uh, far from being ideal, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, if you uh, see on uh, uh, consistent flaws uh, through uh, lenses of many indicators, we should admit that something went wrong. And uh, certainly indicators uh, related uh, to property rights, uh, rule of law, uh, in our book there is a special chapter devoted to that. Uh, greatly deteriorated uh, uh, since uh, the period of, uh, uh, of 1990s and uh, 2000s and uh, from this perspective uh, trajectory of uh, Russia's development is hardly conductive for, uh, uh, for modernization. And also in terms of international linkages, uh, Russia is still relatively isolated uh, to uh, uh, to the uh, global economy and from uh, flows of uh, human capital. Well, please note that uh, only a quarter of uh, uh, Russian citizens are holders of uh, international passports, uh, which means that they can't uh, travel uh, outside uh, Russia and uh, some uh, nearby states. Uh, Roughly uh, one of ten uh, Russians is able to communicate uh, in uh, languages uh, other than Russian. Again, there is a huge variety uh, across the country. Certainly in uh, capital cities, these uh, shares uh, uh, are uh, much higher. Uh, but uh, it means that uh, uh, despite a quarter century of uh, international integration, it's still a relatively uh, isolated uh, country. And in terms of global economy, it is uh, uh, nearly the same. Of course, uh, 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 we uh, 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 first uh, have a look on uh, uh, energy flows, but beyond energy, uh, Russia's input uh, to, uh, to global economy is uh, still relatively modest uh, if weighted uh, uh, onto, uh, onto uh, economic uh, potential. Uh, of uh, the country. Yet uh, there is uh, another uh, side effect of globalization and certainly uh, many uh, Russians uh, called uh, each other uh, via iPhones, uh, look uh, Hollywood movies, uh, prefer to drive uh, Mercedes or BMW and uh, send uh, their children or uh, grandchildren uh, to uh, be graduated uh, from universities in Europe and in the United States. But uh, still, it is a relatively isolated country despite all of that. And of course, uh, this uh, uh, electoral authoritarian regime uh, is uh, also hardly conductive uh, for, uh, for uh, implementation of authoritarian modernization project because it looks like a mix of uh, both um, unavoidable defects of democracy and unavoidable defects of uh, authoritarianism. We see uh, all uh, matters uh, usually discussed with regard to democracies, such as political business cycle, regular holding of elections, uh, some sort of um, uh, shy of political leaders to uh, take uh, unpopular uh, decisions uh, 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 with regard to social policies, uh, also uh, problems with, um, uh, with so-called distributional coalitions, uh, veto players and the like, and at the same time lack of political accountability, uh, uh, lack of political competition, all of that uh, 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 is uh, hardly conductive uh, for modernization. And of course, uh, 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 since uh, Rent-seeking became a sort of uh, major principle of governing uh, the country. Uh, it uh, greatly contributed uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, bad governance.
I will not uh, discuss uh, in details uh, 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 numerous uh, stories of uh, uh, cronyism and, uh, and corruption, but uh, just uh, to stress that uh, it should not be considered as defect of the, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the system of governments. Rather, it's a principal element. Uh, of uh, system of governance and uh, what is uh, regarded as uh, crony uh, capitalism uh, should be uh, 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 should be perceived uh, not, uh, not as a uh, sort of uh, uh, illness but uh, rather as a, a normal uh, state of affairs. And also what is interesting for uh, post-Soviet world uh, that um, political ideas uh, played relatively negligible role. There were numerous uh, studies uh, which demonstrate these effects uh, and um, uh, I will uh, not uh, just uh, uh, repeat what has been said by uh, scholars like uh, Stephen Hansen or Henry Hale, but uh, do it mean that uh, political ideas doesn't matter at all? I would say that in any given polity, there is a certain normative ideal. People, uh, uh, or uh, not only uh, 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 representatives of society at large, but also uh, representatives of political elites, might have certain uh, normative perceptions of how the uh, world should like. And the problem with uh, Russia is that uh, uh, world views of uh, post-Soviet leaders are uh, basically retrospective. And uh, the normative ideal is what I uh, stated as a good Soviet Union. A system which is somehow resembled uh, uh, late Soviet Union, but uh, uh, lacked uh, defects which were inherited uh, for the Soviet system. Uh, the real uh, late Soviet world was uh, the world of, uh, of uh, shortage, uh, the world of uh, inefficiency, uh, and it was annoying. But imagine the Soviet system without shortage of goods, rather than with plenty of goods, uh, <coughs> with uh, more uh, efficient uh, leadership, with more efficient uh, uh, and uh, more uh, bright uh, um, uh, uh, consumption and, uh, and the like. And you will see uh, the retrospective ideal of uh, the Russian elite, as well as a significant part of Russian society at large. Of course, retrospective old views are hardly unique in Russia. Yeah, just recently, uh, uh, the United States uh, elected president under the slogan Make America Great Again. It's also a retrospective old view. But uh, my understanding is that uh, retrospective old views are hardly productive for any modernization elsewhere. If you look uh, retrospectively and uh, try to rebuild uh, the ideal from the past, uh, it's not the best way to, uh, uh, to modernize anything. But it's particularly true uh, for Russia uh, because this uh, uh, normative ideal coincided with perceptions of some sort of existential threat uh, from the West. Also, uh, uh, there is a phenomenon which uh, Sergei Guriev and uh, Daniel Trisman called us the phenomenon of information dictatorship, the uh, regime which uh, uh, put extraordinary efforts on information manipulations. Of course, uh, <coughs> it's a sort of uh, tool of dominance over its own citizens, but the problem is that it led to misperceptions among uh, rulers uh, as such. And uh, of course, uh, uh, while uh, after 2014 Russia shifted away from uh, agenda of authoritarian modernization to agenda of geopolitics, uh, this project of authoritarian modernization may be perceived as a matter of the past. But it's also good for uh, understanding the logic of this project and why uh, it uh, failed. Let me just briefly outline uh, the major problems uh, uh, Russia faced on the way of this uh, authoritarian modernization. One uh, of these problems was outlined uh, by uh, Huntington uh, half century ago. He uh, called it as King's Dilemma. Imagine uh, that uh, there is a, a ruler who uh, would like to uh, modernize uh, uh, his country, 
I would say his because uh, in uh, uh, most of countries uh, dictators are uh, male, uh, there are uh, uh, very few female dictators uh, at the globe. Uh, and this ruler uh, 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 invested a lot of efforts into economic development, but economic development caused uh, the rise of demand for political uh, changes. And uh, again, this is exactly what happens uh, in Russia in 2011-2012. People who came to streets uh, in Moscow and in other Russian cities were beneficiaries of modernization. Those people who, who greatly improved their well-being exactly because of economic growth, uh, <coughs> but uh, at certain point they uh, uh, feel that they need not only uh, economic uh, well-being but also political freedoms. And certainly uh, uh, Russia's uh, response to these uh, demands uh, was uh, quite similar to uh, uh, those described uh, uh, by uh, Huntington in many traditional monarchies. Modernization uh, was turned away uh, because the uh, regime faced uh, with, uh, with the threat uh, from uh, its own citizens. The politician's dilemma is another problem outlined uh, by uh, Barbara Giddens in her study of uh, uh, policy changes in Latin America. How rulers <coughs> can improve their uh, countries in, if they face with a uh, poor quality of bureaucracy? And uh, Geddes argued that uh, the best way to uh, concentrate on certain, uh, 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 certain uh, policy areas, uh, which uh, considered to be priority areas uh, for rulers, and create certain conditions for improvement uh, at the expense of uh, other policy areas, or what she called as pockets of efficiency. And yet, uh, there were some pockets of efficiency uh, in Russia, but the paradox that uh, progress uh, at some policy areas uh, was achieved uh, at the expense of uh, abandoning or uh, 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 reforms or very slow progress in uh, some uh, other fields. The challenge of unfulfilled promises. If you have a look on <coughs> some uh, uh, plans and programs for uh, modernization of Russia, you will figure out that uh, many of uh, these plans and programs uh, remain on the paper. There was a, a strategy for social economic development of Russia adopted in the 2000 uh, so-called Gref program uh, under the uh, name of uh, Hermann Gref, then the Minister for Economic Development. Ten years or later, uh, some experts uh, figured out that less than half of uh, these proposals uh, were implemented anyhow. Half of the proposals remained on the paper, uh, and even among uh, those uh, which were launched, uh, only, uh, only uh, uh, a quarter uh, were achieved in full-fledged way. More recent analysis of uh, so-called Strategy 2020, <coughs> conducted by uh, another group of economists, uh, uh, find out that uh, for the new program, uh, uh, even less than 30% of initial proposals uh, were implemented anyhow, and basically uh, this program was uh, nearly abandoned uh, after 2014. So these uh, great promises uh, 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 remain basically uh, on the paper. I thought one, one should not say that they were not implemented at all. But the results were uh, very modest, uh, to, to put it bluntly. And finally, what is uh, called as the challenge of mediocrity. Mediocrity is a, a typical phenomenon which we faced in our uh, everyday life. Yeah, uh, uh, if we compare uh, uh, countries with uh, students uh, at the class, uh, well, probably uh, Russia should not uh, be regarded as a sort of F student, if we will use uh, American scale from A to F. Russia is not F student, uh, uh, but uh, also not A student. It's something like C student uh, who is muddling through uh, 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 every session, but uh, cannot improve uh, dramatically uh, its position uh, in, uh, in the class. The major problem for a C student, maybe some of you know it, uh, that uh, uh, it's very awkward. 
F students brought some attention. A students definitely brought some attention. But C student is uh, something uh, which uh, uh, is uh, probably the uh, uh, most awkward thing. And uh, certainly it combined envy to A students, uh, too much high uh, self-estimates, uh, and some sort of uh, uh, awkward behavior toward uh, A students uh, and uh, uh, these uh, misperceptions when <coughs> C students uh, believe that uh, they are better and brighter than A students uh, is uh, really hardly conductive uh, for, uh, 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 for any improvement. This uh, phenomenon was certainly observed uh, by uh, <coughs> numerous um, analysts, uh, journalists uh, with regard to uh, status seeking uh, among uh, uh, Russia's uh, elites and uh, citizens at large. Uh, and it's also hardly conductive for uh, modernization. So, to summarize, modernization was perceived uh, by uh, Russia's uh, rulers uh, as mostly a technological dev device for uh, legitimation of the status quo in uh, politics and ideas uh, really barely met reality. It was uh, typical for uh, uh, modernization uh, uh, project under the uh, presidency of Dmitry Medvedev, when uh, he posted uh, this idea as a centerpiece of his uh, policy program. But if we have a look on the output, we'll see that uh, actually uh, so may, uh, many promises and uh, so uh, few deeds uh, and uh, results of this modernization were very, very modest, like, well, basically renaming of uh, militia to police, uh, some cosmetic changes in other direction, uh, some uh, big uh, proposals which uh, were not implemented, and the like. Political and economic institutions. There was poor pro uh, protection of property rights, uh, ra uh, lack of the rule of law and uh, over, uh, uh, overarching impact of uh, some special interests uh, uh, and uh, uh, these uh, institutions uh, were basically side effects of, uh, of uh, uh, choices made by, uh, by Russia's uh, ruler. And in the end, uh, policies uh, which were aimed to insulation of government uh, from uh, public opinion and from uh, uh, political influence other than those from president uh, also not always uh, led uh, to uh, success stories. And policy making, <coughs> if we uh, compare policy changes in various uh, areas, uh, was uh, also rather mixed. Uh, in our book, uh, we uh, discussed uh, uh, certain policy changes and we realized that, well, uh, there was a real success story of tax reform, which was a top priority of uh, President Putin during his, his first term and uh, tax reform was implemented rather quickly, brought <coughs> immediately positive results and uh, 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 it's... Uh, uh, effect on uh, Russia's economic development was really great. There were some mixed uh, uh, records uh, in terms of uh, reforming of uh, school education. Uh, we focused on introduction of so-called unified state exam, uh, the mode of examination of school graduates, which uh, dramatically changed uh, the whole educational landscape in the country. The reform was implemented despite numerous uh, uh, efforts uh, of resistance, but its uh, outcomes uh, were very controversial and uh, reformers themselves uh, were very critical about uh, uh, outcomes uh, they achieved. <coughs> also, um, uh, uh, pension reform uh, nearly failed uh, because of certain, uh, certain compromises as well as administrative reform, uh, the weakest link in this, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, program of uh, policy changes. The question is, and it is an open question, to what extent uh, post-Soviet achievements were made because of authoritarian modernization project? 
or despite of this, uh, this project. And, uh, well, it's always uh, 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 half, half full or half uh, empty uh, glass. Uh, let me just uh, skip some, uh, some of the slides and uh, come uh, to, uh, to the conclusions. Uh, success stories of uh, authoritarian modernization uh, are relatively rare because uh, of unique uh, set of circumstances. It should be that policy reform is a top priority of a popular and capable political leader, exactly the case of Vladimir Putin in <coughs> uh, the early 2000s period. Reformers are insulated from influence of special interest groups and uh, able to coordinate directly with the head of the state. This was again the case of uh, tax reform of 2000-2001. And policy changes are adopted and implemented uh, very quickly and uh, brought immediate positive effects. And if all these conditions uh, uh, are met, uh, then uh, we could expect that uh, authoritarian modernization is successful in some areas despite all these major constraints I outlined. But also this is why uh, policy uh, reforms uh, uh, brought uh, these successes uh, relatively, uh, relatively rare. And it means that uh, actually uh, Turning back to the statement that for every Likwan Yu there are many Mabutus, it's not because of, uh, not only because of leaders. Of course, there is a tendency of blaming political leaders, but it is not uh, uh, always because of, of the leader, but rather because uh, 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 leaders uh, always faced uh, with uh, certain uh, risks and challenges. If uh, they uh, uh, go to, uh, to the path of reforms uh, too far, then uh, these policy reforms can uh, bring some sort of unintended consequences. And uh, in the worst case scenario, <coughs> these uh, policy changes can uh, come in vain, and this is exactly what uh, happens with uh, policy changes under Dmitry Medvedev. Of course, uh, if we uh, uh, have a look on uh, the current situation, then we will uh, figure out that there is almost no room for authoritarian modernization project and certainly a uh, uh, list of priorities of uh, uh, Russia's rulers is uh, uh, very different from, uh, from that. Uh, but uh, uh, the question is what will be next and uh, probably uh, at certain uh, point, uh, the project of uh, authoritarian modernization uh, will be uh, revived uh, either under the same leaders or under different leaders. And uh, the same uh, questions, uh, the same issues will be uh, on uh, political and policy agenda over and uh, over again. And let me stop at this uh, moment and I will be happy to uh, respond to uh, questions, comments and the like. Thank you. Okay. I will do the moderation again. The floor is open for questions, comments. I have uh, two questions. The first question uh, relates to the uh, political regime. You outline uh, at the beginning of the presentation you placed Russia in the comparative perspective. Basically, uh, you are talk, uh, you're saying that um, a, a different, uh, naming different factors why uh, regimes, authoritarian regimes, use economic growth as uh, some kind of uh, factor of supporting so the survival of regimes. I'm interested in the question, what do you think uh, about the perspective of uh, breakdown of political regimes? Because also there are a lot of uh, different studies focused on Latin America that show that if the economic growth is not strong enough, it leads to the breakdown of regimes, Russian economic growth has declined uh, over the last years, and uh, I'm sure that a lot of people like feel the consequences of the decline. 
uh, why the regime has not break down or do you think uh, see any perspective? Well, probably the economic growth is not that important for the survival of, uh, of the regime. And the second question is uh, also relates to the uh, comparative research um, that showed the uh, survival of dictatorships. I'm referring to the current book by Ezra. Uh, that said that survival of uh, authoritarian regimes relates on the, develop, uh, on the relation between leadership and elites. And here I'm interested in, in your opinion about uh, the most current developments with the uh, former uh, Minister of Economic Development that was in the <laughs> basically put out of his office and uh, brought into prison. Uh, what do you think, uh, whether it shows some kind of uh, changes or uh, cleavages uh, inside the ruling elite in Russia? Uh, yeah, uh, we'll try to uh, uh, keep it a little bit outside. Um, first and foremost, uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, economic uh, 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 effects of uh, um, uh, growth and uh, decline, uh, we should take into account the magnitude of change. Uh, I uh, attempted, uh, but uh, not found uh, uh, in, uh, my, uh, uh, in my computer, the excellent uh, uh, picture uh, produced by one of my uh, colleagues. There is a, a graph which demonstrated the uh, uh, dynamics of real income uh, of Russians since uh, 2000. The picture is the following. Uh, from 2000 till 2014, the real income <coughs> grows uh, uh, more than two times uh, uh, for an average person. Over the last uh, three years, uh, there was a decline of uh, basically 15%, uh, which means that uh, 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 the decline was relatively little vis-a-vis -vis what uh, happens with, uh, with the economic growth. Uh, and uh, it was uh, 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 little not only uh, in terms of scope, but also in terms of uh, time. Of course, there is no guarantee that uh, over time trends uh, will be different and uh, people will uh, become more and more uh, angry and uh, will, uh, will be uh, uh, encouraged uh, to, uh, uh, to protest against the regime. As of yet, we do not observe uh, such, a, uh, such an effect. But it's also uh, 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 a matter of uh, what uh, is more dangerous for, for the regime. If there is a slow uh, but steady recession, or if uh, there is a, a, a very uh, severe one-off uh, decline. And there is no uh, answer even in comparative literature, because nobody uh, knows uh, how uh, how uh, regimes uh, respond uh, to, uh, to uh, both uh, uh, effects. My understanding is that if there will be uh, some sort of protracted uh, stagnation, it will be probably not uh, much uh, an issue for, for the regime. However, if uh, there will be uh, a kind of uh, sharp and very deep recession, then it may be uh, uh, really a danger. But as of yet, there is no sign of uh, uh, any sort of uh, major recession comparable with those of the 1990s. This was a deep and protracted recession uh, with the decline of output of for more than 20% <laughs> over nine years. Still, even at that time, the magnitude of socioeconomic protests uh, was uh, fairly limited. Uh, and I really uh, uh, doubt that uh, we uh, should expect somewhat uh, comparable perspective uh, unless there will be some sort of exogenous shock. As to uh, political uh, uh, elite uh, and its cohesion, my understanding is that, uh, uh, again, as of yet, we do not observe some sort of major breakdowns uh, within the ruling coalition. Yeah, there are some uh, sort of victims uh, of uh, struggle uh, for rents, uh, and certainly uh, uh, the former Minister of Economic Development, uh, Ulyukayev, became one of uh, these uh, victims. He's not the only, but probably one of, uh, of the most visible persons. 
But uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, uh, things like that not uh, resulted in some sort of disequilibrium of, uh, of the regime. Again, I, I, I would not exclude uh, that there will be uh, some sort of uh, major, uh, major division. But uh, uh, as of yet, there is no evidence uh, uh, of open uh, disagreements or open conflicts, other than conflicts uh, over rents, uh, which are very natural because the pool of rents uh, 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 somewhat diminished uh, because of uh, recent, uh, 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 recent uh, economic stagnation. Uh, thank you very much for your lecture. Actually, uh, I have only one question. <coughs> uh, what is the new old three year, maybe three to three um, modernization of uh, British invested in a very authoritarian way? Is there any room for establishing or recreation of institutions in a very in the in the effective way? under maybe authoritarian or empty dictatorial rule in Russia, is there any opportunity to modernize within this framework nowadays? Uh, thank you very much. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, from where uh, a benevolent dictator uh, could come, yeah? Uh, some sort of... Uh, 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 well, uh, Russian version of uh, uh, of uh, Lee Kuan Yew or uh, uh, Park Chung Hee or uh, whoever else. Uh, it's a good question because uh, 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 actually uh, even the reform-minded leader is not uh, free to do what uh, what he wants. One might say that uh, uh, in early two thousands. Uh, Vladimir Putin uh, reminded uh, some of these leaders. <coughs> he was uh, really devoted uh, to uh, uh, social economic development and progress. He set up uh, the goal that Russia should overtake uh, Portugal in terms of GDP per capita. And actually Russia overtake Portugal in terms of GDP per capita, but not much because of uh, Russia's growth, but rather because of Portuguese decline. Uh, and uh, he initiated a number of uh, policy reforms. Uh, he was a genuine supporter of uh, this GREFS program. And at least until 2004, 2005, uh, these uh, reforms were conducted in more or less the way uh, proposed by uh, the uh, team uh, led by uh, Gref, Kudrin and other uh, policy reformers. However, Many of these uh, efforts uh, were halfway, or stopped, or reversed. Probably the uh, crucial moment uh, happens uh, when uh, uh, reform uh, went beyond uh, 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 the field of, uh, uh, of uh, public finance, uh, taxes, budgets, and uh, then uh, into the uh, field of social policy. First uh, major failure was uh, pension reform. It came to a compromise which uh, actually uh, buried any, uh, uh, any reform. Putin himself uh, attempted to be a mediator between two groups, one of which requested uh, some uh, sort of increase of <coughs> payments, uh, 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 increasing of uh, retirement age and the like for the sake of uh, uh, well-being for the future generation. And another group uh, preferred status quo. Why uh, uh, this compromise was uh, impossible? You can't com combine both uh, uh, goals uh, at once. You have to choose. But the choice is very tough. This is the choice uh, for uh, uh, further generation, which will bring positive effect in <coughs> at best uh, 10 to 15 years, but uh, there will be short-term uh, losses for businesses, for ordinary people and the like. 
Certainly, uh, Putin uh, not uh, much interested in uh, pursuing these goals. Uh, he was uh, insensitive to what will happen in 10 to 15 years. And he preferred uh, basically uh, preservation of the status quo. Uh, negative effects of uh, these choices uh, 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 we're observing right now because uh, of the gradual decline of uh, pensions for many people uh, about the retirement age uh, uh, who were much younger uh, 15 years ago. This is the logic of uh, policy changes uh, which every uh, ruler uh, faced. And the paradox uh, that uh, many post-Soviet rulers pursued uh, uh, pension reforms, ranging from Nazarbayev uh, in uh, Kazakhstan to, you may be surprised, uh, Mr. Yanukovych uh, in Ukraine. While uh, Mr. Putin, who was initially pro-reform, uh, shifted uh, to, uh, to the preservation of the status quo. Why? Not because he was against uh, the pension reforms, but rather because uh, he understands that it will be quite unpopular before the next elections, and certainly he would like to uh, get uh, more votes, uh, and uh, unpopular decisions are not so uh, uh, nice uh, uh, when everything is okay. Even more uh, uh, challenging was another part of social uh, policy reform, the so-called monetization of uh, social benefits. It was uh, the failure of implementation. The implementation was conducted rather poorly. <coughs> the responsibility was divided between various agencies and the like. Again, the government responded in a, a very primitive way. It poured more money uh, to appease uh, uh, angry pensioners, but after that, all uh, uh, reforms were stopped. Even the term reform uh, became a taboo uh, among uh, uh, government officials, according to some uh, sources. So when we uh, turn from um, macro analysis, yeah, uh, why reformers uh, pursue some reforms or not, to micro analysis, we see uh, how uh, many factors affect uh, the choice uh, for or against uh, these authoritarian modernizations. And uh, this is why even initially reform-minded uh, uh, leader uh, decided that, well, things are going on well, why we should uh, uh, pursue uh, for the changes. And si uh, since 2005, uh, the, even the word reform disappeared from uh, the public uh, discourse of uh, Russia's uh, authorities. I have a question concerning uh, what you said that uh, one model is these pockets of efficiency. And uh, in your lecture you said that um, there was at least one very successful and very efficient reform is, uh, was the tax reform. Um, I'm a lawyer, so um, I can sort of confirm that um, if you look at the tax law, uh, you even have a sort of rule of law situation in uh, tax law. I mean, uh, not if you are Yukos and Khabarkovsky, uh, but of course, uh, basically, um, you know, the Constitutional Court is quite um, at, um, uh, sort of careful uh, with what um, uh, it does, etc. So the interesting question is, um, uh, why was tax law uh, rather successful? This is my question. Yeah, thanks for your question. Uh, actually, uh, tax reform was uh, really successful in Russia, but I would say that uh, tax reforms were successful in many post-communist countries. There is an excellent book by uh, Hilary Appel, uh, who analyzed uh, tax reforms uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, including uh, Russia, including uh, Czech Republic, including some uh, other countries. Uh, my understanding is that uh, in case of Russia, uh, there was a, a good combination of um, a common understanding of need of reform, but also <coughs> lack of uh, anti-reform coalition. Every <coughs> interest group attacked uh, the proposal of tax code from different angles of view. Like oil companies uh, objected uh, subsoil use tax, which was an invention of uh, uh, of uh, reformers. Uh, 
Finally, they proposed a compromise. Uh, Subsoil uh, use tax uh, will be uh, uh, taken only uh, if uh, oil price uh, will be uh, uh, not below a certain, uh, uh, certain um, uh, threshold. Uh, actually, oil prices went uh, up immediately uh, after uh, this uh, threshold was introduced, uh, but there was no way to, to rise uh, this threshold. Left-wing uh, uh, parties, uh, communists including, uh, attacked uh, flat rate uh, income tax. But again, uh, other uh, actors were more or less insensitive uh, to <coughs> uh, flat rate tax. Regional elites uh, were against uh, some other elements of uh, this uh, proposal, but there was no unified anti-reform coalition. And uh, 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 Kudrin and Greff effectively used uh, divide and rule tactics in bargaining with uh, all uh, of the proposals. But at the same time, they uh, had very close connections uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin. They approached him even without notifying uh, of uh, uh, then Prime Minister Kasyanov and put their proposals not through official channels of uh, discussion and coordination between various uh, ministries, agencies and the like, but rather uh, getting their direct access to Putin uh, to uh, per uh, persuade him that their proposal uh, is the best. It was a risky strategy, but this strategy uh, uh, brought almost immediate success. The tax code was approved uh, in uh, the 2000, already in 2001, uh, it uh, brought uh, some 1% uh, of GDP uh, 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 growth uh, simply because of reduction of many taxes and in increasing of uh, uh, tax collection rate. Tax collection rate uh, greatly improved and uh, uh, therefore uh, 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 could use us as a major argument. See uh, uh, what happens when we uh, introduce the reform. All reform opponents uh, had no chance to, to, to uh, to object uh, this uh, real achievement. And because of uh, this uh, uh, sort of uh, informal alliance, uh, uh, then the next uh, step uh, was made in terms of uh, building of stabilization fund and uh, many other updates uh, to uh, this uh, uh, reform of the tax system. So it was uh, basically politics. But uh, this uh, politics uh, 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 brought uh, some, uh, some sort of uh, uh, immediate benefits and therefore uh, the equi equilibrium was reached. Uh, yes, uh, well, there were uh, many, uh, how to say, abuses of, uh, of tax law and uh, UCAS affair is uh, probably most well-known example, not the only. Uh, but overall, judging by experience of other reforms, uh, uh, tax uh, reform was a uh, really a success uh, story. And uh, uh, I would say that uh, Russia, uh, not, not only Russia's rulers benefited from that, of course they benefited, but Russia benefited, uh, 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 Russian economy benefited from that. And uh, I believe that uh, it was a uh, uh, quite unique example uh, if we s uh, compare this uh, policy area with others. So this was the success of the reform, uh, but uh, now we um, are in 2017 and the tax system, despite all those abuses, uh, etc., is still working. So why is it still working? So um, my question is, um, uh, uh, so maybe is it, it is still working um, because um, understand that um, if you want to milk a cow, you should not kill a cow. You should not kill it. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, tend to agree. Uh, if uh, once uh, whatever reform brought uh, some positive results, uh, certainly it will be very risky to change. <coughs> uh, I would not say that uh, it's once and forever. Actually, the government now discussed uh, the problem uh, of uh, changing uh, the tax system, increasing uh, <coughs> the rate of uh, VIT uh, or uh, uh, other taxes uh, because of uh, problems with, uh, uh, with the state finances. Uh, but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, there is no sort of uh, 
uh, immediate threats. Uh, rather, there are problems with, uh, 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 with reserves, with uh, uh, stabilization funds, or now there is a uh, division between two, uh, uh, two uh, funds. Uh, that's true. Uh, to what extent uh, these uh, further changes uh, will, uh, will be radical or rather, uh, well, uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, destroy the, uh, 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 the system established in 2000 is remain to be seen. Uh, I, I, I will respond uh, to, to the uh, set of questions. So basically you state that tax reform still remains to be a success, but actually, is it true just because lots of people can publicly state in Russia that they do not pay any taxes at all. And it's quite, it's quite common to avoid taxes. Uh, can we measure, uh, can, can we basically say that the, uh, the tax reform is still successful in this case? I'm sorry. Okay, your colleague. I'm confused about um and this term of modernization, maybe uh, because I'm not an economist, could you uh, give us some examples of economic policies that would um, modernize the Russian economy? Uh, this is the first question. And second, um, how would you describe the current economic uh, politics in Russia? What type of it? Um, uh, and maybe you can name uh, another country that has similar uh, economic politics. Yeah, uh, the term modernization, of course, uh, not related uh, to uh, economic policy only, but uh, you are quite right. Um, uh, uh, economic uh, issues are uh, in the heart of uh, modernization. Certainly, uh, there were uh, several uh, policies uh, aimed uh, to uh, economic growth and development. Uh, we discussed uh, tax uh, 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 policies. This is one of the elements, but not the only. Uh, certainly, uh, the uh, government uh, established uh, um, uh, currency reserves, and uh, it was quite wise, uh, given uh, 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 given uh, the troubles Russia faced uh, during 2008 economic crisis, and more recently with uh, decline of uh, global uh, oil prices. Uh, also, uh, the government attempted uh, to uh, pursue certain. Uh, industrial policies, uh, we have uh, in uh, the book I mentioned uh, a chapter about uh, some sort of policies aimed uh, to high-tech development. Some of them were more successful, some of them were less successful, but uh, uh, actually uh, there were certain achievements, uh, more modest uh, than uh, one uh, might expect. There was uh, a big uh, part of uh, uh, state modernization is military reform. We're not uh, 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 focused on uh, these issues in uh, our book, but I would say that military is greatly modernized uh, during the 2000s. The military was downsized, became more professional, more capable, uh, and, uh, and uh, the like. Uh, so one should not underestimate uh, efforts uh, Russia uh, put uh, onto uh, this front. Uh, so there were some achievements, but uh, there were also shortcomings and uh, social policies uh, were uh, underreformed. Administrative reform was the greatest uh, failure of uh, these uh, changes, and basically uh, uh, there were no um, incentives for uh, for uh, 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 improvement of uh, quality of, uh, of bureaucratic apparatus and uh, operation of uh, uh, street level bureaucracy. Uh, so there were uh, also some uh, uh, shortcomings. Uh, as to uh, the question on uh, tax evasion, I would say that uh, in comparative terms, uh, tax evasion uh, greatly decreased. If you would compare uh, Russia in the 1990s, <coughs> when uh, tax evasion uh, became a sort of common practice, I mean both by individuals and by uh, companies, the degree of tax evasion uh, in uh, 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 Russia now uh, is much less. But at the same time, we have uh, huge uh, loopholes, uh, basically, uh, 
related with uh, big uh, companies uh, which operate uh, through numerous uh, non-transparent uh, operations. And uh, there was a question uh, regarding uh, Mr. Uh, Ulukayev. Actually, uh, uh, the deal uh, of privatization of uh, 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 shares of uh, uh, biggest Russian uh, oil company, uh, 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 Rosneft, came through uh, exactly the same, uh, some sort of shadow uh, uh, mechanism which uh, Mr. Ulukayev openly opposed, and he became a victim. Uh, this, uh, 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 well, some sort of national champions uh, operated in uh, really non-transparent schemes and uh, all uh, uh, statements about uh, tax evasion uh, are quite relevant. But at the same time, if you have a look not on uh, these uh, uh, companies, but on most of Russia's businesses, they have less opportunities for <coughs> tax evasion and uh, the degree of tax collection uh, greatly improved uh, over the period of 2000. Again, these companies are exceptional, but they were exceptional in the 1990s as well. I have another um, kind of question. Uh, you spoke about uh, authoritarian modernization at, in Russia at national level. Um, I want to ask you how important is the sub-national level or more precisely the local level um, for the Russian regime's ability to modernize and adapt to current challenges? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, subnational dimension is uh, uh, decisively important and certainly uh, uh, today I uh, spoke basically about Russia as a whole without uh, focusing on regional variation. Regional variations are great. And uh, certainly uh, there were some attempts uh, of, uh, 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 of uh, regional development and economic growth uh, basically pursued by uh, some sort of uh, progressive subnational leaders or uh, 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 by uh, certain policies uh, by uh, the federal government which uh, uh, <coughs> selected certain regions, uh, invested uh, uh, money to uh, these uh, areas uh, through uh, special uh, federal programs uh, and the like. This was uh, a huge discussion about that uh, during the 2000s. The problem with that is uh, that there is a sort of division of labor. The federal government transferred uh, many responsibilities for social policies onto uh, the shoulders of regional leaders. This was especially true uh, uh, since 2012 <coughs> when um, Putin requested that uh, regional leaders should be responsible for uh, 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 achieving cer certain indicators in terms of uh, 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 well-being of public employees uh, and uh, other uh, social development. But the problem is that uh, this mechanism could work uh, effectively only if uh, there is a, a sort of uh, nationwide economic growth and therefore federal government could inject more money onto a, a regional budget. Now the situation is quite reversed. Uh, there is a, uh, well, at best uh, zero economic growth. Some people uh, argue that uh, 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 it will be uh, some very sluggish economic growth this year, but still the federal government have no money to inject to, federal, uh, to, to, to regional budget. And therefore, uh, regional leaders uh, 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 are in very awkward position. They could not uh, invest a lot of money for uh, regional development programs. They have to fulfill uh, promises made by uh, the federal president. And uh, therefore, uh, the list of uh, <coughs> regions with uh, some hopes for uh, progress is very limited. Of course, there are some regions of uh, very special status. Uh, Chechnya is most uh, well-known example. But these are exceptions uh, that, uh, that prove the rule. That's it. Thank you. You have started so quickly with your answering that uh, I couldn't place my question. Yet. I, would, I would go back to a more broader question. Maybe you can quickly answer this. When we look at the literature, one term pops up quite often, increasingly. Putin, Putinism, Putinism, 
and there's a civil that there's an increasing personalization of power, so focus on on as a person. When you we, we, we listen to you, then you still describe uh, the elite as a coalition, changing coalition, informal bargaining between different types of interests and political ideas. What do you think about this term, Putinism? And do you see a personalization of power increasing? Is this uh, see this okay for you? Yeah, there is a uh, personalization, and I would say that, uh, of course, uh, uh, Russia is not unique. Uh, in every uh, 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 every uh, uh, regime of that type, uh, we uh, focus on uh, uh, leadership first, and uh, certainly uh, uh, leadership is outstandingly important because, uh, 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 well, uh, even. If we have a look on recent Russia's history, we see uh, how, uh, uh, how much uh, depends upon uh, personal priorities of, uh, uh, of political leaders, not only present day uh, leaders, but leaders of the past with regard to past attempts of uh, modernization and the like. The point is uh, that uh, we should not uh, put all the blames or all the credits uh, to, uh, to Putin. It would be uh, misleading because leaders rarely uh, do uh, anything alone. There are some uh, influential uh, policymakers who affect certain pri uh, priorities of the agenda. And if we are talking about uh, 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 socioeconomic modernization, I wouldn't say that uh, <coughs> Putin rely uh, only uh, upon uh, some uh, sort of, uh, uh, well, uh, cronies and uh, uh, Dutch friends and the like. Uh, many people who are in charge uh, of uh, socio-economic development of the country, they are quite well uh, qualified experts <coughs> who clearly understand uh, uh, what to do, what is necessary and the like. The problem is uh, what, uh, what is a, a priority uh, list? And uh, the list of priorities for socioeconomic development was clearly uh, observed uh, in the early 2000s. It was even stated in 2012 when Putin returned back to uh, uh, his presidency, he offered a broad uh, uh, program uh, of uh, policy initiatives, which were prepared basically by the same people who were in charge of uh, elaboration of 2000 uh, uh, proposal uh, uh, of Greg strategy. The problem is that at a certain point, he just abandoned uh, this uh, 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 program, well, literally or figuratively put it uh, into the trash can and uh, shifted uh, the whole direction of socioeconomic development of the country uh, uh, into a very different trajectory. And that's uh, the basic risk of uh, uh, any sort of authoritarian modernization uh, uh, in, uh, in re uh, a personalist regime. Yeah, uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, the leader decided that uh, 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 international agenda, geopolitical influence and the like is more important than uh, well, well-being of the country. Well, but Putin is not alone. Uh, at the global scale, there are so many uh, rulers who uh, behave in the same way.